Uh, hello everyone. I hope we have started this time. Uh, so yeah, welcome to the first uh, Bellabit user group meetup of this year. Uh, this is supposed to be the last meetup of the previous year, but uh, we had some technical issues the last time. So yeah, welcome. And uh, yeah, uh, so this uh, meetup is a part of the .NET uh, Global .NET Conf 2020, which is still ongoing, although we are already in 2021. And today we have our friend Josip Klarić from Zagreb. Uh, he will be talking about WebAssembly standard, uh, where we are at the moment and what the future brings. So we would also like to thank our sponsors, JetBrains and .NET Foundation for managing this stream. And uh, yeah, also during this talk, uh, we expect that you have some questions. Uh, you can post them uh, on the YouTube chat or you can post them to our meetup event page. So we'll collect uh, all of them. And the first two people with relevant questions uh, will be given a JetBrains subscription for well, to use on, on one of their products. So yeah, without further ado, Josip, uh, you can start. Thank you. Okay. Now. <laughs> okay, thank you, Miroslav. Thanks for the kind introduction. So let's start. Uh, let me first share my screen to start my presentation, my slides. Uh, okay. Just second. Okay, here we are. So uh, we'll talk about WebAssembly and uh, uh, possible evolution that, uh, that follows uh, in IT industry. And this is the uh, agenda what we'll talk about uh, during th this following maybe 45 mil minutes. And uh, of course, we'll start with uh, questions like uh, what is WebAssembly and why we need it. Uh, uh, we'll talk about current state of WebAssembly. Uh, then we'll have a short demo, uh, demo with uh, uh, browser and some some small demo with uh, in .NET. Uh, we will then talk about WebAssembly origins, how we came to WebAssembly uh, and uh, upcoming features, some use cases and Finally, we'll uh, end this talk uh, by answering why it is a revolution, at least in my, from my point of view. So let's start. Uh, why WebAssembly? Uh, as we all know, uh, and we all use browsers uh, today, browsers are really, really powerful uh, piece of software. Uh, they can uh, run a lot of uh, things that was uh, not uh, imaginable, I don't know, five or ten years ago, just uh, just in browser. But today uh, they are really powerful. And since we moved uh, our web page rendering from static server side to uh, the rendering pages in a web in a web browser to client side, we can say that uh, actually browsers are powered by JavaScript engines and uh, even though they are so powerful, uh, we still have some emerging technologies that will, uh, emerging technologies like uh, virtual reality, uh, machine learning, and so on, but also some heavyweight category of software uh, like video or uh, image processing software that still requires some more uh, processing power. Uh, for example, uh, Simple action for of rotating a 4K image uh, in various browsers takes various times. As you can see here, uh, this is, this chart shows uh, uh, measurement done by some of uh, Google uh, team research team that found uh, that in different browsers uh, this action of simple rotation of 4K image takes from two to eight seconds. We can see the, this measure, measuring times in, uh, in this uh, blue vertical bar. Uh, the other bars are some other technologies that that, we are, that are not so important right now, but we can see that JavaScript times uh, vary completely, uh, totally in uh, opposite to the to these other engines or languages, let's say. 
So we can see actually that uh, uh, processing in uh, JavaScript is not uh, uh, not predictable. That's the main problem, the main issue. Uh, and what is WebAssembly? Uh, it's a uh, it's a way or a new technology that uh, allows us to run non-JavaScript code in browsers without any add-ons. We had some uh, tries or uh, running some non-JavaScript code as before, like Java Applet or uh, uh, Flash, and these all require some add-ons. But in this case, we don't we don't need any any add-ons to browsers. We uh, browser uh, browsers have native support for running this kind of uh, this technology. Uh, it's a compact, very compact binary format optimized for download. Uh, also, uh, it is not uh, machine code, even though uh, it is uh, near native, it has a near native speed uh, and performance, but uh, it's still not native code because simply we cannot uh, know on which browser, on which architecture this code will be running. So it's, uh, uh, it's actually uh, binary format uh, in, with uh, intermediate representation, just a little bit uh, with small uh, overhead on top of machine assembly that will be really run on, on the machine that where browser is running. So uh, when the browser uh, runs this code, it will first compile it for the specific uh, architecture of the machine where, where the browser is running. So it's not, uh, it runs uh, at uh, near native speed, so just a small percentage uh, slower than a real uh, native uh, code, the same na native code. Uh, and uh, it can be uh, treated as a language, uh, but generally it's more, it should be more uh, treated or seen as a compilation target because no one will actually write uh, by hand uh, any uh, low-level code like WebAssembly or like we, the same way we don't actually write uh, any assembly code. We use higher languages for that and then we compile that code to assembly. The same way we will do with the WebAssembly. We will use our uh, higher languages, higher level languages and uh, compile our code to uh, WebAssembly as a compilation target. And uh, as I said, it's not a uh, language for any specific machine. It's a language for uh, for some conceptual machine that will be, as I said, as uh, earlier said, compiled to real machine, and uh, where will uh, where it will be run. Uh, some important uh, important uh, properties of, of web assemblies are isolations. Uh, is isolation and uh, that brings us some benefits. Uh, by default, uh, WebAssembly is sandbox. Uh, it is uh, it it is running in uh, in a uh, chunk of memory that is uh, given to the uh, the WebAssembly engine at the start, and he, it cannot access anything outside that memory set. So uh, by by default, it is uh, limited to this uh, memory set, and of course that means it's uh, secure. Uh, we, our code outside that is also secure. Uh, it can be compared with uh, some virtual machines uh, because it's uh, isolated from the rest of the system, and uh, actually we have several uh, several levels of uh, isolation. In this uh, box here, I have my uh, representation of these uh, levels of isolation. Maybe it's not uh, so nice, but uh, we can uh, get the picture of, uh, of these levels. Uh, in this uh, yellow uh, box, we have all the, um, let's say, memory of the machine. In this blue box, we have uh, uh, browsers. Um, part of memory uh, that is assigned to browser uh, by the system. Uh, and inside that, uh, WebAssembly will get its own set of part of memory that it's going to run in. So uh, anything outside of this 
a gray, uh, gray area for WebAssembly uh, is not accessible and he, it doesn't know about it. So what are the benefits of this? Uh, benefits, is, uh, benefits are that uh, our uh, high-level languages get some speed and lower languages uh, get uh, isolation. Uh, usually uh, isolation is actually problem problematic with low level languages like C or C++ uh, when they uh, can crash the machine uh, by ac accessing uh, uh, accidentally or, or intentionally other parts of or the memory uh, outside their own space so in, uh, when when this kind of when this code uh, is compiled to WebAssembly and run, it it cannot cross these uh, boundaries of their own uh, uh, memory, so it's safe. It's isolated from the rest of the machine. So uh, we also get some uh, str strong type guarantees and consistent and reliable performance. Um, regarding current state of WebAssembly, uh, we. Uh, we have a, a first version called MVP. Uh, it's actually point, uh, zero, uh, version 0 point, uh, 1.0 released in uh, 2017. And uh, it's still not widely used because it's uh, just, it contains just uh, core functionality and uh, currently supports uh, low level languages like uh, C, uh, C++ and Rust. Uh, it's still in early stage, especially regarding the tooling, because uh, uh, currently you have to a lot of things you have to do uh, manually, like uh, accessing or managing these uh, memory uh, parts that we, are, we were talking about and uh, handling, uh, let's say, strings. Uh, it currently supports only uh, number types, meaning. Uh, integer and floats and their 34 or 60 uh, for 32 or 64 uh, variants so that's simply it's low level and it uh, uh, operates only with numbers um, but still all popular languages are interested in supporting it and there are lots of uh, new features that are coming to WebAssembly uh, that are currently being uh, standardized so let's go to simple demo to check uh, to see what uh, how it how actually uh, WebAssembly works. Uh, but before going to the code, uh, I will start with uh, with this uh, site called WebAssembly Studio. That is actually the best or easiest way to start with WebAssembly or playing with WebAssembly. Uh, you, you get on this site, when you get to this site, you have you got some ID like uh, uh, UI, where you can uh, choose one of these template projects. I will choose, uh, select this empty uh, C project and simply start uh, push uh, this create button and we will get some uh, template with simple main method that returns this number, integer. Uh, we have some uh, defined HTML that uses, that actually doesn't contain anything except using this uh, uh, JavaScript, JavaScript file that is defined here and it has some container here. This JavaScript here uh, defines some uh, interaction between JavaScript and uh, uh, and uh, WebAssembly, and uh, when we run this, we will get some output here. We get this 42 that is actually defined here as a return value from this method. Uh, our example is uh, based on this. You can simply download this uh, uh, project. And I've done that and uh, made some adjustments to that uh, simply by adding some a few additional uh, methods. Uh, this is the main that returns the same 42 number. Uh, I, I've added these two methods just to see how how can we work actually with, for example, with strings and how we uh, uh, call methods with parameters here. Uh, as you can see, we have here uh, the same uh, 
not the same but very simple uh, similar method like here we only uh, take uh, two uh, arguments uh, and return them as uh, 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 add them together and return the result in this case we have a discrete a grid method maybe i should uh, make a code a little bigger yeah okay and uh, we can see here uh, i'm simply returning from this grid method, uh, string hello, uh, in this case, window, Windows, it's uh, still my, uh, uh, from my older presentation. But anyway, uh, in this case, uh, I've added to this HTML, I've added a few more uh, paragraph uh, uh, elements uh, using the uh, main JavaScript file that is defined here. And this file contains following script, uh, JavaScript code that actually uh, fetches our main WASM file. Usually when you compile WASM uh, uh, WebAssembly code, uh, you get uh, the output is WASM file or, or uh, binary file with uh, WASM dot WASM ex uh, extension. We load that, then we uh, create array buffer from that response. After that, we use these bytes from array and call instantiate method on WebAssembly uh, class. That will also then produce our, us uh, some object that we have, uh, that we can access instance from that. And that on that instance, we have exports. Exports are actually methods that we have defined here in, in our main C file. Uh, so, uh, yeah, main C, we have these main methods, uh, add method and grid method. Uh, so how it works, as you can see, we simply here in these two cases, uh, main and add, we simply call that uh, these methods and provide parameters for this method. And the result of this method is assigned then uh, to this uh, the, uh, DOM element. Uh, as their content that's it so since in this case we are uh, returning integers we can uh, access this uh, uh, return value directly and uh, uh, write it to this uh, dom element content but uh, if we are going calling this method greet method that actually returns us uh, some complicated <laughs> structure like string as we said uh, web, uh, web assembly usually uh, not usually actually works with only with uh, numbers uh, we have some different way of handling the string strings uh, in this case uh, we are calling we have to first uh, prepare uh, this array uh, that will uh, again from exports we can access access it from memory this uh, memory buffer and in this buffer we uh, Actually, we will uh, just uh, we will in this uh, when we call this method grid, we will get pointer to the position in the memory where the where this uh, uh, string result of this method starts in this buffer, in this memory buffer, and then we uh, loop through this uh, buffer, check uh, every character, uh, every uh, byte. If is that uh, byte uh, null null uh, null character or not? And if it's not, we simply concatenate the message here, and that's that's the way how we actually get the message from or string from this uh, greet method. As you can see, we directly operate with uh, bytes uh, in the memory of the memory, and it's simply so low with uh, when you work with. Uh, uh, with strings uh, and and WebAssembly, and uh, then finally we uh, assign this message that we uh, concatenated from the memory to this uh, DOM element and display it. And now, if I run it, we'll see the this result. Okay, I, I have to navigate to file HTML file, and you can see here it is. Uh, we have result of main method 
we have a result of add method here and result of uh, greeting. Ah, here I used actually a different uh, wasm file compiled in the, in the, for this uh, example, uh, but since I have these many, <laughs> as you can see, have different versions of this main, I usually, I obviously use the, the, the one here with bell a bit, but here I used, here it still stays Windows. But anyway, you get the point. Uh, okay, and uh, let's go now to uh, another example of how to use the same wasm file uh, with .NET, actually. We, uh, usually we uh, use, when you talk about WebAssembly, you immediately think of Blazor, but Blazor is, uh, I will not talk <laughs> right now about Blazor, but uh, how actually we can use WebAssembly without Blazor in our console app in .NET is pretty much the same uh, same principle as we saw with JavaScript. With, uh, as you can see here, uh, we, I'm, I'm using, I'm reading this file as a byte, reading all bytes from this file here, main wasm, is actually the same wasm file that I used uh, in, uh, in this HTML example, and uh, use uh, and load that into module, uh, but that module, I have to uh, explain that, is defined here in uh, in this wasm time uh, package, npm package, it's still in preview, as you can see here. Uh, you can download that uh, uh, from uh, NuGet and use it, but as I said, it's still in preview and it's still being developed, but uh, it's developed by official organization called uh, Byte Alliance now, who is uh, actually caring about uh, WebAssembly and WASI as a standard. Okay, and uh, now we create a host for this uh, uh, of WebAssembly. Uh, as you can see, we are using dynamic in C Sharp here. We create an instance of the module uh, and then simply call from that instance, we call these methods main here again and add here and here in this uh, greet method, we call the, uh, we have a call here, we get the pointer here, uh, we access the memory here, and from that memory, we have, uh, we read the string from the uh, memory uh, using this pointer, meaning that uh, this this method is actually implemented inside this NuGet package. So we are using this method to uh, read all the strings, or all the bytes uh, starting from this pointer to the, until we reach uh, null term terminator. So we can have, a, I don't know how many bytes uh, that are, uh, that contains actually string and the rest of the bytes in memory contains null uh, terminators. So it will read only those strings that start with this pointer and uh, end with the first uh, terminator, and we'll, uh, null terminator, and we will we'll get this greet message and display it here. So if I run this uh, code, we will see actually that we have the same result here, main method, you can see, so it's displayed here. We, add, we have add method. Okay, I'm using these uh, different parameters now. And hello, bell a bit uh, as a grid message. Okay, that would be so uh, all from the, regarding the demos. Let's go back to slides. And okay, just a second. So uh, we will we'll talk now, now about uh, WebAssembly origins. Uh, we can't actually talk with, uh, about WebAssembly without uh, mentioning or talking first about JavaScript. Uh, because JavaScript is the reason why we get the, uh, why we have WebAssembly now. Uh, in the beginning, when uh, browsers started using uh, uh, JavaScript or when uh, JavaScript was created in uh, uh, 1995, it was 
interpreted and it was pretty slow and it was um, let's say uh, stayed that for a long time about 10 years until uh, we came uh, to web uh, to v8 javascript engine uh, that was released uh, in 2008 or end of 2008 uh, in chrome and that made uh, javascript much faster uh, because it was using uh, JIT compilation so uh, it was not just in interpreting the JavaScript code, it was, uh, it was uh, using that uh, code and compile that just in time when, the, when, this, time, when this code was running. Uh, others, other browsers uh, follow their, uh, also introduced their own compilers because that was, that was the uh, uh, area, uh, age when if you remember that uh, we all as a developer started uh, using more and more client side rendering uh, instead of uh, simple simply uh, calling uh, or requesting uh, servers to do the rendering and just showing displaying pages that was the uh, age when uh, ja uh, when uh, jquery was started to be popular and uh, we got all uh, new uh, client-side engines like Backbone started, I think, first, or you know the the, the history. But uh, generally, all the um, excitement, let's say, moved uh, from server to to, uh, to client, and uh, a lot of attention was um, uh, moved to browsers and uh, made making the website more interactive and more responsive to users. Uh, and uh, one of the issues that we still have, even with this JIT compilation that uh, we have with uh, V8 engine and generally with, uh, own, with their uh, JavaScript compilers, is that dynamic types that, that we have in uh, JavaScript that are really something really cool for someone uh, who likes JavaScript is actually something that on the other hand uh, is affects the performance of the JavaScript. So, uh, as we said uh, earlier, we cannot have the, uh, the consistency and reliability in the code execution uh, simply because uh, in many cases uh, uh, any uh, variable can be anything uh, just like in this simple uh, function we have on this on the, in the on the right, we have add that uh, method that uh, accepts two parameters uh, x and y, and uh, we can pass x and uh, the numbers and uh, to x and y, and also we can uh, pass strings to x and y, and we will get perfectly viable result from that function, but uh, when you think about it uh, uh, regarding in, in, uh, from the perspective of a uh, machine, it has to simply uh, represent those uh, numbers on, or those strings in memory. And if you're constantly switching between uh, in the same function between uh, numbers and strings, it simply cannot be so performant. So that's something that uh, that is in JavaScript nature, and uh, uh, guys in Mozilla actually wanted to uh, see how can they improve, uh, still uh, move further with uh, JavaScript performance, and they found some set of tricks to actually improve the performance, and they call that uh, ASM.js, and uh, it proved to be a much to have much better performance and much uh, more uh, better consistency in performance uh, the same function we saw earlier uh, written with this uh, asm looks like this and you can see these uh, logical or oring with uh, or, or with these both both of these uh, parameters x and y uh, with zero uh, and also with uh, this result uh, of the addition, we also, uh, or with zero. 
what does it make uh, what does it mean that actually uh, give the some give some clue uh, the engine behind that compiles the JavaScript that these numbers are actually integers so um, uh, these operations as just to be sure we don't uh, we, doing this operation we don't uh, make any changes to uh, X and Y we simply uh, make sure that these are integers and the same uh, for the for this return value so that actually gave some speed boost to uh, engine that uh, it can be sure that that this function will always uh, use numbers and uh, do uh, simply uh, better uh, compile better and better optimized code for this for this function in in future when it runs um, and when you compare this uh, process of uh, WebAssembly and the JavaScript, we have these two, uh, let's say, phases. Uh, this uh, upper diagram shows uh, the phases of uh, JavaScript code that goes uh, from transferring uh, text uh, in textual format from the server, then parsing on, on the browser, in browser, then interpreting, then executing, and then JIT compiling. And the same uh, process uh, actually has to be done with uh, with WebAssembly, but instead of uh, it's uh, it's it's actually a bit different. Uh, it's not uh, not uh, called the same way because it's uh, uh, it operates on different type of uh, data. In in this case, in case of WebAssembly, it uh, transfers binary file, which is by by default uh, uh, smaller than textual file it compiles that uh, but that compilation is much faster and much easier than interpreting and parsing this uh, javascript because it's uh, web assembly code is actually prepared on the server uh, for uh, for this um, inter in, in intermediate language that is much easier to compile to machine language than doing all that process on the on the fly in, uh, on, in JavaScript engine. And finally, we have execution on WebAssembly that is also uh, in certain cases uh, simply much fa faster than it can be in JavaScript. So generally, success of JavaScript open doors for a new standard. Instead of going to uh, doing, instead of going for more tricks or uh, annotations of JavaScript, they simply decided to create new standard that became finally uh, WebAssembly. So, um, what is WASI? WASI is uh, uh, something that it became. It, it's actually one feature that became uh, so big feature that is uh, now treated as separate standard because uh, it will allow or it allows WebAssembly to run outside, uh, out of browser. So the same thing that we can compare that to maybe Node and JavaScript. Uh, uh, JavaScript was also meant just to be running on uh, in web browsers, or mm, there was some also uh, there were some implementations of JavaScript outside of browser. But generally, with V8, we uh, got some new opportunity for JavaScript to run on server, and we got Node. The same thing is happening with uh, with WebAssembly. So since it's a really uh, appealing format, binary format, and uh, with good performance, simply uh, people who are working with WebAssembly saw the, the this as a chance. Why not? run it uh, uh, outside of browsers, browsers in their hosts uh, in some uh, engines that will uh, act like a web browser but we will uh, run our code without actually browser so it will allow communication uh, to communicate WebAssembly module to communicate outside of this sandbox it's running on and uh, it will uh, access some it will allow some uh, access uh, access to certain system resources uh, or system calls like uh, accessing file system, opening network connections, uh, accessing uh, cryptography or using clock or some 
some other uh, system calls. Uh, currently, we have used cases that uh, for WebAssembly that are mainly related to porting existing C or C++ code base to WebAssembly. Uh, mainly, these are uh, games. I know a few of them, like Quake or Diablo. Uh, the other uh, is uh, AutoCAD, Lightroom by uh, by uh, Photoshop or by Adobe, or using uh, some, let's say, uh, image codecs that are missing in web browsers, like WebP, to enable browser to, uh, let's say, render these these kind of uh, images. Uh, example of usage, uh, real usage of, web, of WebAssembly is uh, we can mention uh, with Shopify that they use. Uh, the the WebAssembly infrastructure to uh, use to allow the, their customers to plug in their own code and their own specific business logic to their and run that logic inside uh, their uh, platform without uh, any sacrificing any uh, performance and also uh, possible security issues as we saw. Uh, since WebAssembly modules are uh, separated or isolated from the rest of the system, they can safely run these uh, modules inside their platform without any risks. And uh, as they say, single worker handles over 1,000 uh, requests per second. Fastly is another example of uh, uh, usage, WebAssembly usage. Uh, Fastly is, uh, use, is a company that started uh, as an uh, edge computing company, or actually started as a CDN network of computers. And uh, with WebAssembly, they expanded their uh, business to edge computing, since they noticed that they can use WebAssembly from the same reasons as, uh, Shop as we mentioned for Shopify, uh, to run some code, not just to host some static files, to also run some computation, com uh, computational code on their uh, network nodes uh, around the world. And uh, it's simply uh, because it's uh, affordable and easy uh, for them to, to compute, to manage uh, all these uh, computation because it's, doesn't, it's fast, it's performant, and this doesn't require uh, let's say, uh, some big uh, servers to, to accommodate that. Uh, and they're especially uh, proud with their own uh, Lucet engine that uh, have a quick startup time under 60 microseconds compared, for, let's say, for with Node uh, process that needs uh, about 5 to 10 milliseconds. This is microseconds, so 60 microseconds versus 5 or let's say 10 uh, milliseconds so it's a big it's actually a huge uh, uh, difference uh, and uh, one interesting thing is that they uh, spawn a new instance for each request to their computational uh, uh, network so you can see how how the web uh, web assembly are performant so why it's a revolution uh, first of all, it's a revolution because it is a, it is a cro cross-platform, real cross-platform format. It's uh, isolated, as we said, and today we simply are uh, used to use uh, isolation in on various uh, uh, in various architectures, like uh, we use Docker or or some other ways of virtual machines to isolate things. And it's, uh, it is especially uh, suitable for serverless scenarios where, they, where the WebAssembly offers solution for this uh, cold start issue, cold start problem when you, uh, that we have with all uh, these cloud functions that if they are not used, they need some time to start and so on. But with, uh, with WebAssembly, this problem is actually solved. Um, the other, another uh, point why why this is at least I uh, consider it as a revolution is 
so-called developers united i call it because we will we will have a chance in a, a recent future to have single repository for all languages that we will share our uh, components and modules uh, between uh, all developers let's say in, in the world if uh, if the goal of WebAssembly uh, it will be achieved to all of us to uh, simply compile our code into WebAssembly as a compilation target. And we will then push that co uh, code or packages or uh, uh, WASM modules to certain uh, repository like NPM and be uh, able to use it anywhere uh, on any platform. And uh, with WASM, uh, with WASI, we will also have granular security that will also uh, solve these issues that we have, uh, that we can have with uh, using uh, different uh, NPM or uh, generally packages, code packages that we don't own and uh, that may be insecure for, uh, for usage, but uh, WASI have some solutions for that. And WASI by itself is also a huge uh, feature that will also uh, revolutionize the way we architect our, our, our solutions uh, in in future. Just to prove that, uh, we can see the this uh, uh, tweet by Solomon Hikes, who is actually a creator of Docker, who said that if we had this uh, WASM and uh, WASI uh, uh, technology in 2008, we wouldn't have need to create Docker. So it's that huge. If Solomon Hikes thinks that, I think we can also, we can trust him. So that would be it from me. Thank you. And I will stop sharing now and answer some of your questions if you have. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Asip. Uh, it seems that we don't have any questions so far. Mm -hmm. I'm still waiting. I asked in a few minutes ago if there are some questions, but yeah, maybe we can ask you uh, some. So what do you think about the future of JavaScript uh, after, after WebAssembly? So will it uh, will WebAssembly affect the JavaScript future or not? Um, I am pretty sure that it will, uh, but it will not be. It will be gradually, not like uh, from tomorrow we stop using uh, JavaScript. And of course, it's not going to be like that. But uh, in my opinion, uh, 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 WebAssembly is really uh, is actually offering so much possibilities for all of us, all, all developers. And uh, mm, I think in uh, recent future, it will uh, be so feature rich that we will have no need actually for doing anything in uh, with JavaScript. If you're doing something with uh, WebAssembly, why not do it all? But uh, generally it's uh, creators of WebAssembly doesn't, don't think of it that way, they they simply uh, see a WebAssembly as a replacement for some certain specific uh, tasks where JavaScript may not be uh, so performant, like very computing uh, compute extensive uh, tasks, like I don't know, computing some com uh, algorithmic hashes or something like that, uh, cryptography. Or, or part of uh, uh, your site that uh, have some complicated logic or complicated comp computation to do, without going for that to the server, you can implement that in a web, web uh, assembly and uh, call it from JavaScript and just use the result in, uh, further in JavaScript. But as I said, in my opinion, when you simply when you uh, try WebAssembly and see what it can do, uh, I think uh, people will simply stay in that uh, area and uh, 
generally JavaScript is also not meant to be used in on the server uh, when it was created, but now we are using it everywhere. So it's it's difficult to uh, predict that. But in my opinion, uh, WebAssembly will prevail in uh, web development in let's say recent years, but not maybe in two years, but in five years, I think it will be much more, uh, uh, how to say, uh, visible uh, in, in the web. Present or better to say. Yeah, thanks. Okay, we have a few more questions. So here is uh, this one. So DOM for WASM, how long will it take? I think DOM. document object model, yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, actually, it's uh, it's accept uh, it's uh, accessible, or you can use DOM uh, from WebAssembly uh, right now. It's uh, uh, as we so maybe I didn't talk about uh, that completely, but in general, uh, WebAssembly offers you uh, have this concept of importing imports and exports, and uh, you can usually you export the things you want to call from javascript to be callable from javascript and you also can in, import things in in your web assem uh, yeah your, your web assembly module and these things uh, is actually uh, a dom access is one of the things you can import uh, to your uh, web assembly module and then uh, manipulate with uh, dom uh, just almost the same way uh, you do with uh, JavaScript. Okay, thanks. So we have a few more questions. Uh, so this one is from Sakib. So what limitations does uh, WASM have besides it uh, needs to run in a virtual machine? Limitation? Uh, there are some limitations like uh, uh, it's currently working on uh, a 32 bit uh, uh, bit space so you can't have a uh, file a handle file more than 4 gigabytes or something like that it's uh, also uh, in this first version it uh, doesn't support uh, threads but uh, as i said i didn't actually skip that slide uh, of features that are coming to WebAssembly. there are a lot of proposals that will be uh, in next uh, that are currently being stand standardized and will be soon uh, uh, present uh, or released in a uh, next uh, version of uh, WebAssembly specification uh, also uh, these uh, uh, how it's called uh, host bindings it's called uh, these uh, access to actually all uh, APIs, web app, uh, web browser APIs will be accessible to WebAssembly. So basically, you will not have to uh, use JavaScript uh, for anything. <laughs> you, you you can access anything uh, from directly from uh, WebAssembly. There are also uh, one important or or um, big uh, feature that is coming uh, is it's called SIMD. It's, sing it's short for uh, single instruction multiple data. Simply means that you, it's a thing related to uh, uh, processor architecture when you, when the processor offers you some instructions that can uh, uh, operate on a set of bits the same operate do the same operation set of bits instead of doing one one by one so it's uh, uh in some cases especially for i don't know uh, image processing it has a uh, big Im uh, impact uh, because you are actually doing uh, in most of cases you are doing the same or very similar operation on multiple uh pixels that that can be done in a, in one pass or instead of doing one by one okay thanks so i think we have one more question from andreas uh, so what's the performance difference between wasm and javascript approximately yeah and uh, the rules yeah yeah <laughs> okay uh, regarding performance uh, 
uh, generally uh, it it depends but uh, if we want to be honest uh, at at their peak performance uh, javascript uh, and webassembly will actually be optimized just as native code and be performant as native code so there is no win in that in in, the, in that situation but that's an ideal situation and it's usually not the case that you have that uh, optimized completely optimized code as i said uh, it's very difficult to optimize uh, javascript code because it's simply too dyna dynamic and uh, allows you everything i mean uh, uh, changing variables from time to type and that that cannot simply cannot be optimized but generally uh, it should be performance uh, should be improved in uh, favor of WebAssembly at least uh, two times that's the minimum uh, uh, but as I said it depends very depends on the on the situation on the code that you are, are running in a web uh, assembly uh, up to I don't know 30 percent 30 times faster than uh, JavaScript so that really depends on, on your situation mm. okay thanks yeah and just one more comment uh, for the end so Shivendra if I pronounce that right asks for the slides so <laughs> yes of we... course I will share the, we will uh, agree Miroslav where to uh, we can, we can post these... them to meet up uh, yeah. group event okay. I added the link uh, mm -hmm. here, so, yeah okay no problem yeah okay that is it I guess there are no more questions uh, so for the first uh, two questions from uh, Rizwan and uh, who, uh, who had the second question? Uh, Shivendra, yeah. So could you please contact me either through our Bellabit meetup uh, page or send me an email directly to miroslav.popovic at gmail.com and we can send you the, the licenses for or a one year subscription coupon for JetBrains products. So, and yeah that's it uh Josip, do you have anything to add no no from nothing from me okay so thank you very much for for the great presentation and hope to see you thank soon you. live no problem yeah. it was my pleasure yeah thank you all bye thank you bye thank you bye bye